she's singing a song of oppression. She's singing a song that her slave master okayed for her to sing. We singing a song of judgment. That's what I Father figure keep me guided, I'm always protected Not a single wrong, I don't ever get corrected Light over my shoulders, tells from a priest Take a Psalms 23 and sit your tail to a seat Legendary in a way, but nothing like a tall tale False gods set them up, they all fail Fantasies they all sell Nothing in my time can compare to the timeless The light behind my rhyme and the one who I get in line with yeah. Ain't no other lane for this fire flame minister Descended from a higher plane, ain't no higher name from the one When a gun jam, I 
speaker, you know now, divine power, follow me, that's just how it be, yeah. I can testify for sure, my heart not pure, but still I get to see a day that I did not work for, bodies dropping with the climate, gas raising on black faces, still I'm the one who made it, I just be thinking when I roll, something keep watching me, yeah. something keep watching me, the most high, most high. something keep watching me, yeah. Something keep watching me. I feel like everywhere I go, something keep watching me. Uh -huh. Something keep watching me. The most high. With my conscience, I acknowledge that there is a higher power. Look at me. False idols never promise victory. You survived because you was meant to. Stop the guessing. You a prized possession. Blessing from the sky. Ain't no higher lesson. I'm a messenger. You should get with this rhythm. Gospel. You ain't gotta be poor with chains no more. Flip up your master plate. Don't be captivated by your master space. The earth is yours. The first, the one we know gon' have to pass away. Destiny. You part of a higher design. They tell me the sight of his eyes like fire and wines. Coming at the wild child who made it through the birth canal. One shot. Amazing how you missed the kiss of death. Life was in your uh -huh. step, people turned away from out this way Never coming back, yeah. slipped and fell inside the cracks yeah. Landed on their back, but you ten toes in the field Still in one piece, for real, from the bottom Where all kind of brothers get easily killed Rest in peace to them You part of a higher design They tell me the sight of his eyes like fire and wine When I roll, something keep watching me Something keep watching me The most high yeah. Something keep watching me Something keep watching me. I feel like everywhere I roll, something keep watching me. Uh huh. Something keep watching me. Most high. Uh huh. I said something keep watching me. Yeah. Something keep watching me. Welcome to the Truth of Yah. The Truth of Yah's board game's mission is to humble the world in the Truth of Yah. The Truth of Yah's board game's vision is to build up the poor man and woman in spirit. Many people are deceived by lies, deceit, fraud, pride, forward mouth, arrogance, and evil ways. The poor in spirit are attacked daily. The vision to build up the spirit it's to cause people only to walk in the ways of Yahweh, just as his son Yahweh Shai and the prophets did. By not just speaking the word, but by putting every word Yahweh spoke into action. Into action. We're the sons of thunder Israelites, and it's our heart's prayer and desire that you all get the truth of Yah game. Use our discount code SOT for additional savings. Shalom. Shalom. All right, let's, let's play, man. Let's, let's get it, man. Let's get it going, man. Shalom, I'm Sister Mayan, um, a student ambassador for the Spiritual Midwifery program. Spiritual Midwifery has changed my perspective in a positive way when it comes to birth work. It has made me confident that I'm taking on the role that the Most High has chosen me for. I feel as though it has provided me with the right tools to better serve my current clients as a doula and future clients as a midwife. What makes Spiritual Midwifery stand out more than other trainings and programs is that it's much more personable. Just being able to learn with and learn from sisters that are like-minded brings out a level of closeness and spirituality that cannot be achieved by anything not ordained by the Most High. I can definitely feel his presence every time class meets. I would definitely recommend the program to other Hebrew women pursuing midwifery. It's such a joy to learn from another Hebrew sister and also have a community of sisters to learn with that face the same daily struggles that we face in life. Shalom, 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 family. First and foremost, I have to give all praises, all glory, and all honor unto the Most High God, Yahweh. Of course, I do so in the name of His only begotten Son, Yahweh Shai, who the world ignorantly calls Jesus Christ. It's your brother, Ariala of Sakari, and I am excited to present to you the nation of Israel the official Hebrew Israelite Bible. Now, this has been the culmination of four long years of hard work, and it is available for purchase at HIBOfficialZion.com. Get yours today. Welcome to Pillars of Rest. 
where you can find special material for our sisters, by our sisters. This is a Sons of Thunder exclusive platform focused on building, encouraging, uplifting, and engaging with the daughters of Zion. Here you'll find personalized and interactive content geared towards showing what it truly means to be a pillar of rest. Interviews, scripture breakdowns, tips on motherhood, marriage, and testimonials are just the beginning of the many things to learn from and enjoy in this program. Shalom, shalom, Israel. First and foremost, I'd love to give all praise, honor, and glory to the Most High God, whose name is Yahweh, in the name of his only begotten Son, who the word ignorantly calls Jesus Christ, Yahweh Shah. We are the sons of thunder Israelites coming on here week in and week out to prophesy the downfall of this wicked nation and to exhort and instruct you so-called Blacks, Hispanics, and Native American Indians in sincerity and in truth, man. All right? All praise to the Most High. Another Truth Tuesday class. That's right. Right when we take all false doctrine and put it to the test. Right now, today, we're going to be talking about how Ma the, the, the false prophet Muhammad, yes, the leader and teacher of Islam, right, the uh, bringer of the, the Quran, uh, how he teaches to commit adultery, man. All praise to the Most High. Y'all like that. Y'all smash that like button. Y'all share this video to your, 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 your Islamic friends, your Islamic family. And show them how to profit, how to how to wicked prophet, wicked false prophet Muhammad, right? He uh he he disseminates lies and and, and, and teaches you the same. Mm -hmm. Now it's not me, it's him. You know what I mean? But all praises to the most high God. Thank y'all for joining us for this class. Let me go ahead and shout out my people, man. Get this John Love for me. Let's see who we got in the building, man. All praises. Thank y'all for joining us. Uh, shalom to your part of Uh uh Richard Perez, Abba Yanam Yasharala, Kowal, SOT Shalama, Asaya House of Nakausha, Shalom Sister, Shalom to Warrior Micah Allah, uh Navashaya, Shalom to uh Yotham, Soldier the Rock. Shalom to Kazak. And thank you. And thank you, uh, Yaquab and some sister. Who is it? Sister Arya for coming back and becoming a member again. Right, y'all go look at these brothers and sisters, man. Thank y'all for thank y'all for becoming members again. You know, welcome back home. Welcome back home. You see what I'm right. If you would like to become a member, just go to the platform. You should be able to refresh this screen you want. Back out. And press join. There should be a join button under here if you want to become a member. And what's happening with that member, you get exclusive members only content, right? Uh debates the debates and things in that nature, right? As if you was a Patreon member, man. So all praise to the most high for that. Shalom up to Kazak Emmett, Faith Love. And if you're a pillars of rest, if you're a part of the Pillars of Rest program, go ahead and stand up. Go ahead and stand up, man. Shalom on the Faith Love. Right. S O T S O T soldier, y'all call y'all Shalom to do working. Uh, Karataza. Yazabad. Hmm. Am I forget John Allen? Yahana Israel. S O T soldier Shamar. Yolanda Caesar. Shalom sister. I think that's everybody. And as y'all can see, man, we got the, the, the delicate uh, flowers, right? The oh, pillars of rest right. standing all praises to the most. Uh, look at that. Look, look at how they look at, look at it with the pillars of rest. I want to be loving sisters. You know what I'm saying? I mean, on, these, are, these are the sisters that have set themselves apart yeah. and have, have taken the next step in their walk and become the pillars of rest. But you know what I mean? I could give y'all. You know, me, <laughs> me, you know? we speech. I could try to explain it to the best of my ability. But nah. you know who does it the best? Y'all know who do it the best. Uh, <laughs> the voice, man. Just let the voice do it, man. Hold on. Hey. 
Hey, Kai, hey, Salakia, hey, for my for the sisters, man. Again, you know, we got something special coming for y'all just during this Passover week that's coming up. Right. We're going to, like, everything that y'all do, you know what I'm saying, the, the arms and the offerings and things like that y'all do for the for the camp, you know, we give it back to the people, man. So we want to shout out for our Pillars of Rest. We got a special brunch for y'all coming up the 21st of April, right? Free admission to get in, man. We y You just got to come. You just got to come. You know what I'm saying? It's going to be a beautiful thing. You're going to meet the sisters that you see on for the videos, for the interviews. Y'all going to meet each other. It's going to be it's going to be a beautiful thing. Hey, this right here. All right, this right here. Yeah, yeah, that, that right there. Yeah, right. And it's fifteen dollars for the pillars of rest. If you're not a pillars of, I mean, if you're not a part of pillars of rest, it's fifteen dollars. But if you right. are a pillars of restless, it's free. This is your brunch, right? Brunch. Pull up, host your little event. Um, you know, welcome all the brothers and sisters. You know, that come with their family and stuff like that, and, and and let them be a living example of what a pillars of rest is. You feel me, right? And if you want to know how to join the pillars of rest. You know, I'm going to let Amari out tell you. Welcome to Pillars of Rest, where you can find special material for our sisters, by our sisters. This is a Sons of Thunder exclusive platform focused on building, encouraging, uplifting, and engaging with the daughters of Zion. Here you'll find personalized and interactive content geared towards showing what it truly means to be a pillar of rest. Interviews, scripture breakdowns, tips on motherhood, marriage and testimonials are just the beginning of the many things to learn from and enjoy in this program Praises to the most high, man. So if you would like to join the Pillars of Rest platform, you have to go to Patreon. Right? Go to Patreon to become a Pillars of Rest. All praises to the most high. That's right. Uh man, Shalom. Hey man, this this lesson is actually through the spirit and power of the most high God, right? But through the diligence of this mighty captain right here, is this lesson is even it's 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 all be uh it's it's brought to y'all today. This is this is scholarship. This mighty captain Asha Allah, uh, in a in a saga against these um these Muslims, he just went into the lab and found this. Mm -hmm. And the first time he brought this, the first time he brought this uh, account out to the Muslims, they kicked him off the stage and they blocked him, so he of would course. not be able to come on there and teach again, right? Because it's such a dangerous account when in the hand when in the hands. Of the Hebrew Israelites, man. That's right. Right. And we praise the Lord for that, man. We praise the Lord for giving us a mouth that cannot be gainsay and doctrine that cannot be resisted. Right? Through the Spirit. So, first off, I want to I want to show y'all something. So now getting into this lesson, Muhammad is teaching to commit adultery. Mm -hmm. Now a lot of people will say, okay, let's get the Quranic verse. But this account is not in the Quran. Okay? I'm going to say it again. This account is not in the Quran. No, it is not. So then, the rock, how you going to say? Oh, I'm going to show you. Just calm down. Just calm down. Just calm down. Hey, did I forget to shout anything out? Mm. I think you're good out of one. Uh, Passover. Uh, I think you brought everything out, right? That's coming up. Yeah, yeah. All praises. So boom. So what I'm a f first I'm gonna do is show y'all this little video to show y'all what is the significance, right? So y'all go ahead. Y'all go ahead. Hey man, if y'all are soldier in the, in, the, in, the, in the camp, go ahead into the chat and get y'all brothers in class because they not here. Get y'all brothers in class because this is something that y'all need. I bring the. Of course, for the people that support the body, y'all get this. But this is for y'all. We make these lessons for y'all so y'all can be sharp. I don't want no Muslim confounder, y'all. Y'all need to have this right here. Right? So right now, so if you don't find it in the Quran, Darak, where do you find it? 
Well, you find it in something called Hadith. That's right. And I was gonna, I was gonna try to figure out how to elaborately tell y'all what a Hadith is. But you know what I'm gonna do? I'm gonna get a dusty, dusty, dusty Ishmaelite up on here, and he gonna, <laughs> and he gonna tell you. I can't stand Ishmael. I don't want. I can't stand Ishmael, Elam, all the great right. heathens. I can't stand them for shh. <laughs> nothing, man. So I'm gonna get, I'm gonna get, I'm gonna get a dusty, dusty Ishmaelite on here to tell y'all what a hadith is, right? So let's see. Assalamu alaikum. Peace be with you. Hello. Uh, thank you for joining me for this. Uh... And look at this goofy, this goofy, his nigga goofy beard, man. You can smell the funk through the screen out of one. <laughs> he can smell he's so musty through the screen, man. And we operating this video under fair use. This is for educational purposes. Sure. Why are we doing this only for educational purposes? Hold on. We find That's it. That's it. That's all. We're not doing this to hate nobody. We're not doing this to bad nobody. We just doing it for the teaching. Uh for this for this educational, actually as edu educational purposes, man. So all praises to the most high. Uh praises to the most high for education. Book review. Uh, today uh we are looking at uh, this book. It's called Al Hadith. Uh, and uh, this is an old edition that I have. The title is spelled with an S at the end, but new editions are spelled with a T H. H A D I T H. Uh, there's a very important book. Let me get a seven in the chat if y'all can hear this. Man, shout out to Sister Janae. Man, shout out, shout out to Sister. Shout out to that that that, that mighty pillar of rest right there. Pillar of rest. Yes, yes, yes. Y'all, hey man, would y'all rather me bring the dusty Ishmaelite here, or did y'all want Esau with with the short sleeves? With the, with the with the fat neck, y'all want him back? Y'all want him or y'all want the Ishmaelite man? Hey, the choice is yours. Cause I did want to go into grace, and I just like how he got the whiteboard up and how he teach. Like it just be like, man, he just want me to just come in and just with a machete, just 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 go through a cut for real. That's how he be acting. He be acting like the Rock. Please cut me. That's how he be making his videos. That's why I be bullying him. He be asking for it. <laughs> you see, he be asking for it. Right? What is this? What does this mean? You Yo, I can't, it's because of the ugly beard. I don't want to. I can't stand oh, this most beard. His mustache at? It doesn't connect. This look, bro. All right, bro. I'm glad y'all can hear. Hold on. Let me see. Yeah. Excuse me. They do. Y'all don't want Mormon drip. Book. I'll explain why. It's uh, written by Al Hajj Maulana Fazlul Karim, uh, who is uh, uh, an important scholar uh, from uh, the Indo Pak subcontinent. And um, he uh, compiled this book as a, a, a new edition of uh, an old book that is called uh, Mishkat al Musabih, Mishkat al Musabih, which means something like the niche of lamps. And um, uh, this is a title of a, of, a, of a book that is a collection of hadith. Uh, so after we look at the Quran and we look at the life example of the Prophet Muhammad, peace be upon him, uh, we get a broad understanding of what the Prophet, peace be upon him, was up to, what he was doing, where he was going, what he was teaching and so on. Now we want to get to the specifics. So how do we get to the specifics? That's in the hadith, the little snippets of information about what the Prophet, peace be upon him, said, what he did, mm -hmm. or uh, what might have happened in his presence, and he did not object to it, so that becomes precedent for Islamic law. Uh, so the Boom! So what this is, it, the Hadith is after the Quran, and what it does is create precedent, precedent mm -hmm. and showing you specific accounts and information that now the Muslim use as a law. Now, not all Muslims subscribe to the Hadith, but they do at the same time. So you'll get a certain type of Muslim that doesn't subscribe to Hadith. Right. Right? He'll say Hadith isn't inspired or nothing like that. 
but then you ask him the question, what angel, <laughs> what angel uh uh gave the revelation to Muhammad? Right? And that and those are the, the those are Sunni Muslims, right? The water captain. So Sunni Muslims do not believe in hadith. Now you ask a Sunni Muslim, what angel gave the revelation to Muhammad? And that ignorant Sunni Muslim will tell you the angel Gabriel. The Quran is not specific. Oh, I don't want. He's not gonna tell you. He's gonna scream at you. I don't want. He's gonna scream okay, at you. Okay. You know, you know they like to scream. They don't like to talk like human beings. Hold on. Oh, let me make. Let me make a. Uh, let me make a distinction. So the Sunni Muslim do subscribe to the Quran. A Sunni Muslim does subscribe to the Quran and Hadith, right? And I believe it's called a Shia Muslim that does not subscribe to Hadith. Correct me if I'm wrong, Captain. Now, where you get that information of the angel is from the Hadith, all right? And it's certain, and it's other it's other little discrepancies that they would they subscribe to things that they subscribe to but the only way you're going to be able to have that teaching is from the hadith right so now we have these men that subscribe to this hadith and they believe that it's precedent and teaching they believe that it's precedent and teaching and grabbing laws and information from the prophet muhammad now what's the problem with that what's the problem with that well in the hadith the prophet muhammad teaches somebody to commit adultery right okay sister wanda we're gonna answer that question after no, right. we'll answer that. We're gonna answer that after and if y'all want because this is not gonna be mad long so if y'all have any questions, put them in the chat now. And then right. after we do that, we'll tap in with y'all questions for real. Mm -hmm. I'm going to show y'all how to find this account, too. So, boom. That's what I'm going to play it again. I'm going to play this, this little snippet again so y'all understand the significance and, and how a Muslim sees these hadiths. Right? understanding of what the prophet peace be upon him was up to what he was That's doing where he was going what he was teaching and so the quran gives a broad understanding of what the prophet was up to and so on now we want to get to the specifics so how do we get to the specifics that's in the hadith the little snippets of and the specifics come from the hadith mm -hmm. give little snippets of information information about what the Prophet, peace be upon him, said, what he did, or uh, what might have happened in his presence, and he did not object to it, so that becomes precedent for Islamic law. Uh, so the book Mishkatul Masabi is a unique collection. Why is it different? You've heard the names Bukhari, Muslim, Abu Dawud, Tirmidhi, and, uh, and Nasai, uh, and we, uh, Ibn Majah. Uh, these are uh, collectors of uh, hadith, uh, and uh, the, these persons have collected uh, their hadiths and put them into massive tomes. Uh, so we have uh, Al-Bukhari, for example, in nine volumes in the Arabic English translation, and uh, Imam Muslim's um, uh, tra um, collection in four volumes, just in pure English alone. And if we add Arabic to it, then we get that in eight volumes. So these are massive works. So how is the average Muslim going to uh, fathom all of this? How are you going to read all of them? So the And so the hadith are the companions of the pro of the prophet or the false prophet Muhammad and I'm gonna just I'm gonna just refer to him as the uh, as 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 Muhammad right just for a person that's viewing this so they can take it the right way and not see me throwing alhams but they just try to soak in as much information that's why I'm gonna do that for them because I'm a fisher of men so so Muhammad uh, 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 the people that accompanied Muhammad are writing down the accounts of Muhammad. So now you have Hadith that's written by Aisha. Aisha was his wife, right? You got mm -hmm. a, a Hadith written. The Hadith that we're gonna we're going to review today is written by a man named 
I can I can mirror if I'm not mistaken. We're gonna see it again, but it's also corroborated by Aisha. So then there's something called strong hadith and weak hadith. Y'all have to understand these concepts when facing a Muslim. Because if you get any of this wrong, if you say anything wrong, you, they discredit you and you can't talk no more. Mm -hmm. They scream, they yell, and it's over with for you. So you have to be faultless when talking to a Muslim. So you have to know this information. All right? There's something called strong hadith and a weak hadith. So a strong hadith is somebody that was around the prophet. Oh, around Muhammad, right? And they wrote these accounts down firsthand with being with them. And then a weak hadith would be somebody that heard something from a companion, right? A student of a companion and a person that probably wasn't there when it happened, okay? The account that we're getting into today is a strong hadith because this is from the wife of Muhammad and a companion of Muhammad. All right, and without further ado, let's let me teach y'all how to find it. Okay, so I'm gonna share my screen. Let me share it again. Hold on. Let me share the screen first. So like, it's it, it it it's gonna get crazy. Can I get a reader? God, right, listen. These names is going to be hard, bro. I'm telling you. Don't spend too much time on the names. Just just, just do your best. All right. So what I'm going to type in is QuranX.com. Boom. And so when you get to... Oh, y'all can't see. Boom. So you this is QuranX.com. So we get to QuranX.com, you have commentaries, right? You have hadiths. This is what you want to get to. You want to get to the hadith. So you get to the hadith, the book you're going to be looking for is Sahih Bukhari. We're going to go to volume seven. We're going to go to book. Let's do book. Let's do book. We're going to do book 63 first, okay? And then we're going to go to Hadith 186. Okay, boom. That's how you do it. Is anybody confused? Is anybody confused? Do y'all need me to run back how to do it again? Don't hey, don't be too serious and reading it already. We need don't be patient. Yeah, let, me, let me get the service of the tab, y'all. Follow me. If I have to do it again. All right. So we got Sahih Bukhari. Okay, they want me running back. So you go to you go to QuranX.com. This for y'all soldiers. Y'all put y'all get y'all pens and y'all pads. Stop playing. This this cut right here is crazy. It's crazy. It's not like this is something you gotta have. Like, come on, bro. Okay, boom. You get to Quran X. This is what you're gonna be on. Right? Boom. Go to high D. Mm. We could look at that. Good. So we're going to go to Hadith. It's going to ask you about the books. These are different people, right? Different. These are di uh, uh, different uh, companions of Muhammad. We're going to go to Sahih Bukhari. And we're going to go to book seven of Sahih Bukhari. Now we're going to go to book 63 and then we're going to go to hadith 186 this is now yes pay attention now this one right here is not really that verbose but the next one we read is really verbose all right 
So go ahead. Can you can y'all see it? Y'all need me to zoom in. Y'all need me to zoom in. I'm good. I don't want to read it. Okay, can I read that junk? You don't have to read it. So like this man, this man name is Rafa. I'll don't read the owl part. Just say it Rafa. Just so people can understand. Okay? Rafa and Abdur. Okay? Rafa and Abdur. Just simplify the names as much as possible. Right? But go ahead and read the account. Khan. The wife of Rafa came to Allah's messenger and said, Who is Allah's messenger? Mm. I need this in the chat. Who is that, y'all? I'll oh, give no, you a clue. Malak. Someone Malak. dusty. Oh, good. Malak, what we about to do is we showing a hadith on Muhammad teaching to commit adultery. So you gonna you gonna want this. I, this is uh this is premium. This is premium scholarship right here. Brought to you by the mighty Levite, uh, uh Kohari, Captain Asha Allah. Uh, All right. So yes, y'all are right. The messenger, according to the Quran or, or, or Quranic verses or Islamic uh, culture, the messenger is Muhammad. Correct. Yeah. That's Dusty. him. <laughs> Dusty Muhammad. <laughs> hey. And so what? So so Rafa's wife went to Muhammad and said what? Well, it's like the wife of Rafa came to Allah's messenger and said, Oh, Allah's messenger. Rafa's divorce me. It will. What word is that one? It will vocabulary. Is that? Am I saying it correct? It will. vocabulary. Irrevocably. Irrevocably. Salakia. Irrevocably. After him, I married Abdul Rahman ben Az Zubair al Khwarizmi, who proved to be impotent. Mm -hmm. Allah's messenger I said to me. Perhaps you want to return to Rafai's nay to Rafai's. Nay, you cannot return to Rafai until you and Abdul Abdur consummate your marriage. I don't know if y'all understand what was just read, but let's what I want y'all to focus on is who this is narrated by. Mm -hmm. So this 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 hadith is brought to you by Aisha, the wife of Muhammad. Right? She witnessed that. Who, 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 uh, hey, never mind. That's another lesson. That's another lesson. But this is the wife of Muhammad, right? Boom. So we have Rafa. Then we have Abdur Rama. Right. So a woman is with Rafa, and she says, I mean, Rafa divorced this woman, right? And then Abdur Rama took her. And now she's claiming that he's impotent, right? He can't satisfy her or give her kids, right? So then the prophet says, so you want to go back to your first husband? The only way you can go back to your first husband is if you consummate with the second one. That is haram, or that is sin. Damn. So this is one account, but you know, to, uh, uh, to, in a uh, in a mouth for two or three witnesses, a matter is established. So we're right. gonna say in a uh, Sa'i Bakari, same book, right? We just gonna go to chapter uh seventy two, right? And this is the version. That Kahari is talking about the verbose one, and it's seven sixteen, right? Oh no, not this one. Hold on, y'all. It's not seven sixteen. It's seven fifteen, right? So it's book seven, volume seven, book seventy two, chapter seventy two, verse seven fifteen. All right, and this is brought to you by. Uh, I, 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 Krima. This is a companion of Muhammad and one of Muhammad's mighty men. He's one of his warriors, right? And this is exactly this is one of the key. These these uh 
hadith are keys to Islamic culture or Muslim culture, right? This is like their commentaries, if you will. You know how the Christian pastors have their commentaries? This is like those commentaries. You know how the Jewish the Jewish people have their uh, what's it called? Um, what's it called? Dang, the uh, dang. The Talmud. Talmud. Yeah, yeah, the Talmud. Talmud. This is their version of the Talmud, right? And fun fact, bro, I was trying to find a Muslim breaking this down. No Muslim is breaking this down, bro. Right? So let's see. Now let's see. Uh, let's read this one. Let's read this. Uh, the more verbose one. So these are two witnesses. Too strong. It's a strong hadith because it come from Sahih Bukhari. It's strong mm -hmm. hadith because it come from somebody that walked with him, and it's two people that walk with us saying the same story. Let's read it again. This is gonna give you more detail. Khan, my five divorces wife were upon Abdur. The name is crazy. Abdul Rama. Just say just say Abdul Rama. Khan. Mm -hmm. My five divorces wife were upon Abdul Rahman married her. Mm -hmm. Aisha said that the lady came wearing a green veil and complained to her to her Aisha of her husband and showed her a green a green spot on her skin caused by beating. Caused by what? By beating. Oh hey man, this is beating uh in the Quran. So not mm -hmm. only now let's see if now let's see if the messenger rebukes this nigga for being his woman. Right. <laughs> <laughs> let's 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 read on. <laughs> it was the habit of ladies to support each other. So when a lost messenger came, Aisha said, "I have not seen any woman suffering as much as the believing woman. Mm -hmm. Look, her skin is greener than her clothes. He bruised up. Damn. Keep going. When Abdul Rama." Heard that his wife had gone to the prophet, he came with his two sons for another wife. Hey, card, watch this. Watch this card. Go ahead. She said, "By Allah, I have done no wrong to him, but uh -huh. he is an impotent and is as useless to me as this holding and showing the fringe of her garment." Right. He he, he can't satisfy me and give me kids. Read. Abdul Rahman said, "By Allah, O oh Allah's messenger, she has told a lie." Uh huh. I am very strong and satisfy her, but she is disobedient and wants to go back to Rafai. Why is the woman? Why? Why does she have bruises on her? Because he's disobedient. <laughs> a demon, dude. <laughs> Yo, this is this is live. This is giving you a historical account of Muslims beating their women, mm -hmm. and it's not talking about a light tap. With a toothpick or no, a piece of hay, he's bruising this woman, right? Hey, 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 Mario, get the sword, get the sword. Uh. He's bruising this woman. So now, this can't be well, interpreted as, or when you read this, it can't be interpreted as, boom, you, I hit her with a, a piece of hay, a, a piece of straw. No, he's bruising this woman. Last time I checked, straw doesn't bruise women. That's right. Your, your hands do. And as we can see, the messenger said absolutely nothing. The pro Muhammad said absolutely nothing concerning nothing. the woman's bruises. He don't care. He didn't about say him. why you. Hey, that would have been the first thing that somebody would have said. Hey, you beat her? <laughs> right? Come on, bro. Kind this of, this was, is something we gotta understand, right? You have something, King? Okay? said, "One, hey, they're not like Yahusha. They say they believe in Yahusha, but Yahusha said, love your neighbor as you love yourself.' Exactly. So they don't practice that. Uh, That's right. Uh, right. Okay. And then they they claim that they don't subscribe. We're gonna see. Read read that Surah four and thirty four. God, this is book. This is. Wow, I was about to say that like the scriptures. Um, so <laughs> four thirty-four. Yeah. Like it, hold on. Okay, but those, but those wise, from whom you fear arrogance, first advise them. So he, that's what he's saying. She's yeah. arrogant, right? Mm -hmm. She's bucking up, is what uh Abdul Rahman has said, right? What he say to her? She he's is disobedient. disobedient. <laughs> right. Read. Then if they persist. Forsake them in bed. 
if they keep being disobedient, re, re, this is the Quran. We're reading out of the holy, unholy Quran. Right. And he's saying, first <laughs> forsake her in bed. Read on. Well, per, first advise them. Oh, oh, then, first, first tell them, hey, you doing you you doing too much. Chill out. Right. Right. Then forsake him in bed. Then what's the third thing to do? And strike them. So <laughs> she being disobedient. Muhammad told you to strike her. Mm -hmm. That's right. <laughs> and we're seeing this in a culture right here. According to this hadith, we see in their culture, right? And the, and Muhammad has no problem with how he's conducting with his wife. Right? So let's keep, let's pick up where we left off in this uh in this surah. I mean in this uh hadith, where we see at right here. Kind of, kind of right there. I'll start from where it says uh uh, where it says, uh, he came with his two sons, and uh, I'll start right there. It says, uh, she has told a lie. I am very, hey, I don't want he's trying, he's trying to sound like he's all bad. I am very strong and satisfied her, but she is disobedient and uh -huh. wants to go back to Rafi. So she want to go back to her first husband, read. Right? Right. Allah's messenger said to her, If that is your intention, then now that this is unlawful for you to remarry Rafi, unless. Abdul Rahman has sexual intercourse with you. Wow. <laughs> read, read on. Then the prophet saw two boys with Abdul Rahman and asked uh -huh. him, Are these your sons? On that, Abdul Rahman said, Yes. The prophet said, You claim you claim what you claim, i.e., that is that is important. But by law, these boys resemble him as a cow resembles a crow. Okay. A crow resemble a crow. Basically saying you saying that he can't give you kids, but he got two boys right here. It look just like him. So that can't you're lying. But the only way your lying ass can get back with your first husband is if you lay down with him, have sex according to the account, have sexual intercourse first. And then go back to your first husband. Ladies and gentlemen, that is Muhammad teaching a woman to commit adultery. Let's go to the book of Leviticus. That's right. Hey, lock it. Go ahead. Hey, because in, in, in this, in their belief, right, their book says that, hey, refer to the refer to the scriptures. Refer to the book that came before. All right. So we about to see right now live. We about to show you live. This, does the Bible agree with this? Does, did they get this teach? Did Muhammad get this teaching from Moses? Because they, that surely they they said to refer back to that book, to the mm -hmm. book of old, to right. so the one that came before. And the Bible is much older, much older. So we about to see if Moses uh, inspired Muhammad to think like this. Ah. And so like, I like that brother's comment right there. No one wants sloppy seconds. That is so true, man. That is so disgusting. <laughs> Right. Trying to, 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 even, to even try to go inside a woman knowing another man's been going inside of her. That's just disgusting. And I'm going to keep it a buck. Any guy that's trying to sleep with a married woman or even thinks of a married woman, you are, you are a borderline homosexual. Why do I say that? Because why would you want another man's juices on you? It is disgusting. It is just foul as hell. I eat a lot of one. Oh. And pause on the part. <laughs> You're on mute, Adawan. This right here is another Quranic verse that y'all have to have under the belt. It's Surah gotcha. 3 and So it's for, he said, I have revealed to you, O Prophet, O Muhammad, the book and truth. And what it's supposed to do is confirm what came before it. He has revealed the Torah and the gospel. So what has to happen is that Quran, Muhammad's teaching, it has to reflect what the Torah and the gospel said. Somebody got an echo. Right? It has to, it has to has confirm, to. it has to teach the same thing as the Torah teaches. Get Leviticus yep. chapter 20 and verse 10. Let's see what that says. Uh, Levi Leviticus 20 and 10. Mm -hmm. it's, the book, it's the book of Leviticus chapter 20, starting at verse 10. A man that hath committed adultery with another man's wife. Wait, 
How does a man commit adultery? What say chat? What sayest thou? Come, what how is adultery? A, how does a man commit adultery? I need my scholar, my, my, my chat scholars, man. What am what them chat scholars at? All right, SOT social is like a war, right? Sleeping with another man's wife. Boom. All right, continue went on. So, a, a, and the man that committed the adultery with mm -hmm. another man's wife, even he that committed the adultery with his neighbor's wife, the adulterer and the adulterer S shall surely be put to death. Boom. So that's how the only, the only way somebody can commit adultery is if a man has sex with another man's wife or a married woman has sex with another man that's not her husband it's not her husband now if a man that is if a man that is married a man that is married sleeps with a unmarried woman what is that called Get back in the chat. Ask that question one more time, Adam. Okay, Con. It said, <laughs> okay, We're gonna answer this question too. We'll take we'll take that question. So if a man, if a married man sleeps with a unmarried woman, right? What is that called? And my some brothers are saying that's called marriage. All right, get the book of Exodus, chapter 21 and 10. <laughs> See, him get, it's called him getting another wife. <laughs> That's the other one. That's exactly what it's called. All right? So All right? All right? Uh, 21 and 10, right? Yeah, 21 and 10. Okay. It's the book of Exodus, chapter 21 and verse 10. If you take him another wife, her food, her raiment, and her duty of marriage, shall he not demand? Read it slow. God, if he take him another wife. If he take him another wife. Mm -hmm. So this can't be adultery. All right. Because we have laws on a man taking another wife. Right. So a married man getting or having sex with a unmarried woman, he's taking him another wife. Right. Now go back to go back to so boom. Leviticus 10 to Leviticus 20 and 10 was telling you a man that committed adultery with another man's wife, mm -hmm. even he that committed adultery with his neighbor's wife. Right? That's how you commit adultery. By yeah. having sex with another man's wife or a married woman having sex with another man. Right. So according to the law, according to the Torah that Muhammad is supposed to be reciprocating, he's literally telling this woman to have sex with this man in order to go back to the first one. Now he's teaching, he's teaching two concepts that are against the laws of God. First, he's teaching her to commit adultery, right? Secondly, he's teaching this, he's teaching this woman that she can go back to her former husband. And that's against the law as well. Go to Deuteronomy chapter 24 and verse 4. Con. Read verse 3. Yeah, yeah, Con. I was about to say that. Uh, actually, should I really start at verse uh, verse 2? Okay, go ahead. Verse 2, yeah, Con. This book of Deuteronomy 24 and 2. And when she is departed out of her out of his house, she may go and be another man's wife. So boom, this is a man giving his woman a bill of divorce. When she departed out of his house, she's free to be another man's wife. Right. Read. And if the latter husband hate her mm -hmm. and write her a bill of divorcement. Right. And, and give it in her hand. Mm -hmm. And sendeth her out of his house. Yeah. Or if the latter husband die, mm -hmm. which took her to be his wife, her former husband, which sent her away. 
may not take her again to be his he, wife. He can't take her. The first one can never take her back. This is it. how God. This is how God puts things in play. But right. then you have some false issue, some false prophet from you don't even know what tribe he's from. You don't know what people he come from. Telling you that you the only way you can go back to your first husband is if you have sex with the second one. Have sexual intercourse with him first, then go back. What if the man impregnated? What if that final time you told him to do that? He impregnated her. Mm -hmm. It don't make sense. That don't make sense at all. But you got they they wicked ass prophet teaching. <laughs> you right. It's right. Like, you got to be a weak, soft punk to even want to go back to her. I would never want to touch my damn ex wife. Comes and I'm say ex because you know your wife no more. She's somebody else's wife. Comes up to me talking about oh, I slept with this guy. Man, you better get the hell out of my face. You simple jakes want to go back to her. Man, you you simple and slow. I eat a lot of one. Okay. Right? Um, no, we don't think all Muslims are terrorists. We didn't even allude to that this whole class. Uh, <laughs> that was dumb. For saying, some, for saying some dumb shit like that, you don't talk about, bro. Yeah, that's stupid. Trans feminist is a, is a crazy name for one. That's crazy. <laughs> Trans feminist. Yo, what does that even mean? I, I don't know. That's another, that's a new one. It's feminist. If you if you're so much of, if you're a feminist, then you wouldn't be trans. <laughs> Dumb. They it's like now, it. now you're trying to usurp that. At, never mind. I don't want to get the channel flag. Right. Go ahead. Yeah, kind of why. Yeah, not nah, and and this just proves you know like I was saying before, Muhammad didn't get that from Moses, right? Okay. Moses didn't teach that to the Israelites, right? Get a. Uh, uh, I shall lock. You get Deuteronomy 22, start at verse 22. Con, good, good. Right. Just to, you know, confirm also what we was reading, right? Because that's the Bible don't teach that. The, you know, most high does everything decently and in order. And that what Muhammad taught is, is out of order. It's, it's nasty, it's weird. And that's not, that's going against their teachings of confirming that which you had before. Because Moses didn't teach that. And the Lord don't operate like that. Read that. It's the book of Deuteronomy, chapter 22, verse 22. Uh -huh. If a man be found lying with a woman married to his husband, then they shall both of them die. Both the man that lay with the woman and the woman. So shalt thou put away evil from Israel. Right. This is going back to the point of, you know, Muhammad teaching to commit adultery. Because the Lord, what the Bible say, the Bible said that's putting away evil from Israel when both die. When the man that sleeps, because we asked this question before, how does a man commit adultery? Well, Deuteronomy 22, 22 explains that a man that be found married, laying with a married woman, both of them are supposed to be put to death. And then you put away evil from Israel because it's an evil thing. And then we just read in Deuteronomy 24 that if a man is married to a woman, he give her a bill of divorcement. He sent her out of the house. She can go be another man's wife. But at that point, once she lays with her new man, that's that's her. That's not her man. That's not her husband. So he, she can't. If that's the husband that she's married to right now, gives her a bill of divorcement, or he dies, she can't go back to the husband that formerly put her away. That's that's evil. That's that's evil. No, he's already been. That, the matter of fact, the scripture goes on to say that that's it's defiled. That land is defiled. She don't belong to you no more. So what Muhammad is teaching is not from this. It ain't thus day of the Lord. And then that 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 religion is not for you, Israel. Uh is it's wicked and the sick, and that's not a teaching that he got from the scripture. Not nah, it don't say that in the Bible. They don't say that. Go to, uh go back to Deuteronomy uh 24 and 4, finish it up. And then we're gonna answer it. We're gonna and put y'all question in the chat. We're gonna answer some uh oh, we got a couple so. All right, Colin, let me uh reread that. So Deuteronomy 24, starting at verse 4. Her former husband was sent her away. May not take her again to be his wife. Mm -hmm. After that, she is defiled. After that, she defiled. So, if he if he had the word of the Lord, he would have never said that, right? That's that's right. one of the keys. That's one of the ways we know Muhammad didn't know what the hell he was talking about when he was on the scene. You see what I'm saying? Because he's saying something completely different than what the Torah says, right? Mm -hmm. 
And then the only way they can get around this right here is by saying that the Bible is corrupted and the Torah that we have today is not the original. That's the only way they can get around it. But we have Masoretic texts, uh, 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 Dead Sea Scrolls, right, mm -hmm. that corroborate this message as well. So don't try that. In Greek Septuagint, we have all these manuscripts that, that are old, that were mm -hmm. around the time that Muhammad, Muhammad was walking the earth that corroborate the same message so don't try that you can't you can't try that yeah at a muslim <laughs> we had a muslim <laughs> we had a muslim uh, uh last uh last friday talk about as the whole scroll of isaiah is not corrupt yeah you see what i'm saying we can hey we're gonna make a slow comeback then it's gonna be the whole book of jeremiah is not corrupt so we got two <laughs> prophets that's not corrupt well you know i can't wait to get a muslim on the platform y'all if y'all know a muslim Send them the email, the True Tuesday email, and line them up for me. And we just gonna, you know, we're gonna do some mighty works in the spirit of, of the most high. Right? Sorry. So it says, so like if if it's not all if it's not off topic, what's the difference between adultery and polygyny? Uh, polygyny, polygamy, right? So one thing, one thing y'all gotta understand is what, what we practice as Hebrew Israelites is polygyny, not polygamy, polygyny. Right. Right, that's what we practice as Hebrew Israelites, a man having multiple women. Now, like we said, like the brother brought out in Deuteronomy 22, a man that has sex with a married woman, that's yeah. adultery. But if the if that man is now going into a woman that has no husband, that is him practicing his God-given right for polygyny. All right? I hope they answer your question, sister. Somebody asked the question as well. Huh. So, can a man lie, lie with any unmarried woman for pleasure? Now, I'm sort of confused about what this question is saying, for real. So, are you saying, like, get um, Deuteronomy 22? Yeah, come on. It's lucky I don't want to believe. I don't put words in the mouth, but I believe she's saying, since it's not adultery for a man to lie with a single woman, can he just do that just to do it, like just for just for pleasure? Like I'm, I'm guessing she's saying with no responsibility after, but can he just take a married sis or an unmarried sister and just lay with her just to do it? That's what I think she's saying. Yeah, let's read Deuteronomy 22. I don't know what she's talking about, but we're gonna read this Bible verse and hopefully I touch it. I believe you want, if I'm not mistaken, you want 23, don't you? 22. Uh, 22? Yeah. yeah. It's the book of Deuteronomy 22, in verse 23. If a damsel is a if a damsel that is a virgin be a betrothed unto a husband, uh huh. Oh no, Slocky, that's not it. No, no, you want a verse, Slocky. You want verse. Yeah, I went too high up. You actually want right here, verse twenty eight. If a if a man find a damsel that is a virgin which is not betrothed. So okay, so said, it's a woman that's a virgin that was not promised to another man. Read and lay hold on her. Mm -hmm. and lie with her right and they be found uh-huh then, then the man that lie with her shall give unto the damsel's father 50 shekels of silver so the woman the basically if a man has if a man finds his woman and finds him a woman that he loves likes and they end up being together and having that those sexual relations that has to be his wife no if ands or buts about it so now what you have to do is do the responsibility of a husband to her. Take right. care of her. Provide her. She does not become another body on the hit list. She becomes your wife. All right? Uh, all right? Is it more? On that verse? Yeah. God, yeah. And lie with her and they be found. Then the man that lie with her shall give unto the damsel's father fifty shekels of silver, and she shall be his wife, because he hath humbled her. He may mm -hmm. not put her away all his days. So what he can't even he can't act like you know you had some of them friends that was acting like they never done nothing with that girl, right? Acting like she's crazy. She's like she thinking that they y'all about to be together forever, right? But you acting he not minded her. Nah, you can't do that through the spirit. Even if the man is in the, if he's not in the truth, that law still stands if he's an Israelite. 
if he's an Israelite and he's dealing with an Israelite woman, that's how it got to be in his mind. Right. Even if he don't know, when the Lord make him accountable of that thing, when he get in front of the teachers and they end up teaching him, he got to move and conduct himself like that or he's walking in the congregation of sinners and he will be judged for that. That's right. All right. Uh, um, why would you want right? Can an Israelite woman leave her heathen husband? That is a that's a great question. I'm gonna say the odd one, yeah. Can, I, believe, I believe we uh, teach, nah. can you can't do that. We, we, we don't, we don't teach that they can leave their husband, that's her husband. Mm -hmm. teach nobody break laws. It's like if an Israelite was was to have sex with her, that was still adultery because you're having sex with another man's wife. Exactly. Right, right, right. Um, so I can. I'll go ahead. Take Joseph, right, being captive in 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 uh, Egypt, so can, and then you know the Pharaoh's wife wanted to sleep with Joseph, and he got up out of there. Even though that's not an Israelite, he still can't do that. Yeah, he still said that he, he can't do that sin. Exactly. The sin in his eyes. Right. Right. Uh, Good precept, Nakawa What's his precept? Bring it up. Uh, Romans 7 and 2. Bring it up. For the, for the woman that is like you, for the woman which has a husband is bound by the law to her husband so long as he lives. But if the husband be dead, she is loose from the law of her husband. Exactly. exactly. As long as that dusty heathen is alive, that's her husband. Mm -hmm. You lay, you lay in your bed, and you got your bed, and I lay in it. Oh, now if a man in it, the, because there's people, I, I hope y'all understand, it's people that's not in the truth that that practice polygyny. Like that's not just that's just like it's African tribes that practice polygyny. That don't make them whoremongers because they're not in the truth. You mm -hmm. see what I'm saying? It makes you a whoremonger when you when you you're stacking up that roster and you don't take care of none of your none of those women and you never and that was never your intention. That's what make you a whoremonger. Right. Right. Can you go into I was uh, saying lust after woman is a sin paraphrasing? Come. Slack at all. Go ahead. I can, I, can teach, I can teach that question he just asked. No, I kind of do it. Okay. Ain't that Matthew 19? Five. Matthew 5? Yeah, kind of. If he's talking about, if he's talking about looking after a woman and committing adultery. Yeah, yeah. Yeah, that's right. Matthew 5. Starting that verse uh, 27. 27. 27. Uh, 28? 21 starts to 27? Yeah, start at verse 27. Thank you. This book of Matthew chapter 5 and verse 27. Ye have heard that it was said by them of old time, thou shalt not commit adultery. Right. This is this is this is the law, obviously. And we just read that we went through what two verses, two scriptures, Deuteronomy 22, Deuteronomy 24, uh, about dealing with oh no, Sake, Leviticus. We went to Leviticus with the adultery. And we know what that is, right? We have that we have an understanding on that. A man going into a married woman, a woman stepping out of her marriage and, and dealing with another man. Right, keep going. So Christ is saying, You've heard hey, to commit no adultery. Verse 28, but I say unto you that whosoever looketh on a woman to lust after her hath committed adultery with her already in his heart. And where's it? And where's your heart? It's your mind. So if you're looking at a woman, right, you don't even know this woman. She could be married to a husband. You looking at you looking on to her, you lusting after her in a way where it's where it's where it's where it's not sexual. You're thinking about dealing with this woman sexually. You've already committed adultery in your heart because. Not only do you not know if this woman is is married, but now you you've allowed your mind to go there. So, yeah, how was I teaching the spirit of the law for real? That's what that's really what he did. Not only did he tell you to keep the law, but also it's really the spirit of keeping the law. So, for instance, when he goes into murder, don't murder your brother. But I'm a, but I'll say this: you've already committed murder when you hate your brother without a cause. Because how else do you get to pull out a gun, pull out a knife? strike your brother and kill him you've already you had it in your mind already this hatred and this unforgiveness for him so yes the law says not to not to murder him that's the action but christ is going to stop it earlier than that hey i'm gonna I'm make it to where you're not going to get to that point love and forgive your brother i look at this the same thing with with this right here you cannot commit adultery 
but I'm gonna stop it before that. Don't even look at this woman and think about having sex with her because now that's gonna you're gonna be tempted to do what? Go and go and be with this woman, go and lay with this woman, and she could be married to her husband. So you've already committed adultery in your heart when you're looking at this woman and think about her in a sexual matter. That this don't mean looking at a woman and saying that she's pretty. You a man, you were you was you a straight man. You gonna think a woman is attractive, but Christ is telling you, nah, don't don't be looking at her and lusting after her in that way. Right, this is teaching you the spirit of the law. That's right, Kim. Con, get to the uh, get to that point where it's talking about um, if you put your woman away and get another woman, it's adultery. Oh, I mean, that. Get that okay, what that else? might that might be uh the nineteen. Yeah, that might be nineteen. Yeah, thirty-two. Other one. Uh, thir thirty-two is also don't they? Doesn't it? This scenario is crazy. Yeah, F like, a but no, it's not a, it's not a dosha because I'm gonna say what it, what is um, um, your brother, you is a car brother, or what's up? <laughs> is that what he's asking? Is that like a, is a car question or what? I don't know what's going on <laughs> about papers. Talking about papers, like like United States papers to be here legally. All right, get uh, get Genesis twenty four. Yes. Genesis 24. Yeah. But still go to that account. Uh go to Christ's account. Okay, I'm gonna hold that. I share a lot. You can get Genesis. I'm gonna hold Matthew. Uh I think it's the last verse. Uh Yeah, it's the last verse. That's crazy. I don't want Jake be marrying the Leviathan just for papers. Get uh 67. Genesis 24. Con, I don't want. It's the book of Genesis 24, verse 67. Mm -hmm. And Isaac brought her into his mother Sarah's tent and took Rebekah, and she became his wife. And he loved her, and Isaac was comforted after his mother's death. Uh, so you know, I don't, I don't have to be too graphic, but you know what they did in the tent? They didn't sign paperwork in the tent. Uh, he made her his wife in the tent, right? In that yeah. action of sexual intercourse. Now, understanding that that's what makes you married, uh, according to the law. If them signing the papers is just the, is just an agreement, right? Now, no, I would not say that's committing adultery. Um, yeah, I wouldn't say that's committing adultery. That's a crazy situation, though. Like, but let's go to uh, Matthew. God, Matthew, it's the book of Matthew, chapter 19, and verse 9. You got, I start at verse, yeah, I'll get to the point, verse 9. And I say unto you, Whosoever shall put away his wife, except it be for fornication, and shall mm -hmm. marry another, committed right. adultery. Yeah, read. And whoso marrieth her, which is put away, doeth commit adultery. So, boom. The reason why it's adultery is because you put a woman away for no cause, and now right. she went off and had sex with another man. And that's gonna, that, that sin is going to be on your charge as well, because you caused her to go off as well, because yes. you put her away for, for it because you didn't like her. Because, um, you know, she didn't cook food how you liked it. And it had nothing to do with fornication. Right here, in no wise is Christ teaching against polygyny. A lot of people try to abuse this scripture to, to, um, to teach that this is talking about polygyny. No, mm -mm. this is not talking about that. Christ is giving you, Christ is being spiritual with you, right? Exactly. Christ is being just like he was being spiritual with you and told you stop looking at that woman, that stop coveting that your neighbor's wife and premeditating that sexual immorality with her. Right. Don't 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 put your don't put your uh your rib away for no weak cause, right? So it's like I want let's get a one of Christ's parables real quick. Let's get a magic twenty five and one. Uh, you got it. I, 
Inshallah. Yo, this is crazy. What is the other one? You said what? No, so what is what's crazy? The other one. Oh. Yeah, you, you ain't asked for a precinct? What about a one? Yeah, kind of. The book's getting it right now. Go ahead, King. Kind of one. It's the book of Matthew, chapter 25, starting with verse 1. Then shall the kingdom of heaven be likened unto two virgins, which took their lamps and went forth to meet the bridegroom. And five of them were wise. You don't mute, you don't mute that. It's like a king. Look what look look what Yahweh should compare the kingdom of heaven. Ten virgins that went to go meet their husband, one man. Ten women meeting their husband, one man. Now, if it was unlawful, why would Yahweh should even make this kind of comparison? Didn't Peter say Yahweh should have no gal in his mouth? Let's think about that. Let's not work on emotions. Hey, the law is the law, right? We gotta just obey it and it go and we go by it. Are you with the other one? Call praises. Wow. A woman cannot put a man away. Makes no sense. And unless he's like a straight demon that's whooping her butt and, and then, even in that even in, in that it's not it's not put it's not put that's her right. away. It's not put him away. It's I need to get away from this man. Get he's, gonna kill, he's gonna kill me. Right? Get, get now, and, and get counsel for that. All right. So like, you know, go ahead. I was going to touch on that too. In uh first Corinthians seven, you know, Paul speaks on that as well. If the, if the wife leaves her husband, brother can get that uh, first Corinthians seven and start at verse, uh, start at verse 10. Gone out of walk. It's the book of first Corinthians chapter seven, starting in verse 10. Right. Neither murmur ye, as some of them also murmured, and were destroyed of the destroyers. Slaki, that's that's First Corinthians seven and ten. Slaki, Slaki, okay, good. right? Because this this situation, you going hey, it's brothers that find themselves in this situation. The Bible got you know, the Bible got the answer on that. So First Corinthians seven and ten. Connor the one. It's the book of mm. First Corinthians chapter seven and verse ten. Right. And unto the married I command, yet not I, but the Lord. Let not the wife depart from her husband. Right, it's the hey Paul's letting you know it's the law. Hey, I'm not even just I'm not even just giving you my own wisdom. The Lord said this. Let not the not let not the wife depart from her husband. You going? But in but and if she depart, let her remain unmarried. Right, hey, but if she does leave her husband, which again, like the captain said, we ain't even put him away. But if she leaves her marriage as she's not supposed to do. Then let her remain unmarried. She can't go be another man's wife. You going? Or be reconciled to her husband. Right. And let not the husband put away his wife. Right. And we just read that, right? So hey, don't put away your wife, for uh, except it be for fornication. But if your wife just up and leave you, and again, this is not, we're not talking about a, uh, we can get into that. We actually have a class dealing with that, how we, how SOT counsels marriages and things like that. Um, and you know our take and how we move and our structure on that right if there's anything like abuse related and things like that we still don't tell the wife to leave her husband but to get away you know what i'm saying you know safely uh but but paul is saying right here you know don't leave don't leave don't don't leave your husband and we just speaking like you know argument you guys disagree he don't make maybe make the money you you know the looks ain't really there like that you know things like that you gonna just up and leave your man like you can't do that now nah. but if you do if you do leave your man as you're not supposed to do you can't go be another man's wife now nah, you gotta remain you gotta remain single right you that man's you're that man's wife still so you know that's it that would be tackling if the if the wife quote unquote put her husband away but it ain't called that if she departs from her marriage leaves her husband remain unmarried that's right Kim. it's like you quick point to all that right you know a, a lot of people they always talk about can you leave your husband or even a man can i leave my wife or just stupid stuff right they forget about the word mercy the most that has mercy upon us the most that should put us away for all the wickedness we've done right but like, ah, we gotta repent people right. can still repent for being a damn demon it's called mercy brothers and sisters forget the word mercy the most side divorced us but guess what the water to you shy we can come back to him why? Mm -hmm. Because the Most High has mercy. He's the most merciful God. We got to remember that. We just can't be right away 
quick to run away. You want to be like Christ says this, be perfect as your father in heaven is perfect. Right. Why can't we be like the most high and forgive? Why can't we do that? Because we want the new thing. We want something new. I'm making more money. I want something new. I don't like the way he is no more. I used to like him 10 years ago. Now I don't no more. What's up with the word mercy? Let's not forget that. If he's a straight demon, take him to counsel. The matters will be judged. And then let's see what the most I wants you guys to do. Because it's not in our hands to take apart something the most I put together. So can I yield with that? That's right. Kinda like, hey, the brother just repent regularly. Like it's it's, it's a regular sin. So just yeah, ask the Lord for forgiveness and don't do it no more. And no you way. don't post, you don't post day truth. Like when he understand what he doing, because the woman that he doing that with probably wasn't looking for him to for her to be cooking for him and cleaning him and move in with him. That's probably not on her mind either. Because these women out here is different nowadays. They. They they stacking up they stacking up rosters like they they niggas too like it's it's like it's like that in the world we living in today. Mm -hmm. So like you know that, that don't mean now and now I understand the truth now I'm gonna now I'm gonna go to every woman that I ever been with and tell them that you my wife now. No, that's not at work. You a new creature. Move forward in righteousness. You know, don't right. go back. Right, man. Y'all got questions. I don't want to just include witchcraft or spiritual fornication. Uh, God, if your woman is in the damn kitchen, uh, cutting a a a chicken throat, and she Great. don't and she don't, she don't want to stop that thing, bro. Yes, because a through the spirit, you're supposed to restore her in the spirit of meekness at the same time. Like, mm -hmm. Cause you wasn't you wasn't your own spiritual wickedness. It wasn't that extreme, but you know what I'm saying, or yo your rib don't want to stop put it on. She don't want to stop wearing them stones on her chest. Now are you gonna divorce your woman because she want to rock stones and crystals and she feel like that's healing her body? Is you gonna do that? I, no, not about to do that. No. You find your your rib in a, in the in the living room doing yoga now you like man she's sacred she's worshiping no it's not the same thing I, you know what i mean you know what i mean y'all be a hey, you know you find out that some of y'all really some of y'all really just want to give up on y'all significant others bro y'all need to chill out and understand yeah. like like the lord put y'all together for a reason so y'all looking for any reason to divorce each other it's crazy yeah the one here's the patience of the saints Exactly, exactly. They forget that the patience of the saints. What does it mean to have patience? Is there a limit to your patience? You have all this patience for Esau's kingdom, but when it comes to your own people, you try to find every excuse to say, nah, I, I hate this demon. I can't deal with this brother sister no more. I'm going to leave this camp because this and that. I'm going to leave my marriage because this. There's no patience. It, it, hey, yeah, how wish I said it? You know, the, the, two, the, two, the two top commandments, love, the, love, love, the, like your, love God, love your heart, and love your brothers, you love yourself. Same thing with your sister. We forget about that because we're still only loving ourselves over anything. Yeah. Uh, right? Y'all got to understand that mercy and grace go both ways. That's right. Oh. Uh, brother, uh, let me see. I think uh, Brother Yotam had a question out of one. Yes. This is insanity. While we are still on the topic, if a if if the woman lie and tell a man she not with her husband anymore and sleeps with him, it will cause that man to be in sin if he believe her. Now I'm a I'm gonna do this too. Give me the book of Sarai chapter six. I'm gonna do this like this because mm -hmm. you gotta understand, folks. Yeah. Like it's it's her fault she did that, but it's your fault too. Good point, other one. It's your fault. It's her fault. She did that, and that's wicked as hell. And do not know that girl is not your wife. No, she's not your wife. You're not taking her to be a wife, and you're not, especially, especially because you in the camp. You know what I mean? Not even saying that happened. If I'm advising the brothers in the camp, no, that's not your real bro. Because she deceits. Yeah, that that's deceitful. But that John is your fault too, because you should have did this. Read six and six and seven, right, other one. 
yeah, yeah, you know what I mean. There's a book that said Rack chapter six and verse seven. If thou wouldest get a friend, mm -hmm. prove him first. Exactly. So you getting a woman, you gotta prove her first, read. And be not hasty to credit him. And be not hasty to credit him. So that's gotta go for men and women. Some of you women get in relationships and now you you wanna leave. You thought he was preset man, but you don't like how he run his household, right? Mm -hmm. You don't like it, and now you now you now you trying to leave. Now then, sex ain't marriage no more. It's just so you can leave, you see what I'm saying? I've seen it. I've seen it so many times. Um, I've seen it so many times. People hasty to get into relationships, but then it wasn't what they what it what it seemed on the outside. You see what I'm saying? Because you didn't sit there and prove a friend first. Now mm -hmm. you have to. Now you have to. Hey, you, it's the uh, what's it? What's it called? The uh, the consequences of your actions is now is now showing a head, right? And now you don't like it. No, but you should have proved a friend first, all right? Because read on. Verse eight. Uh -huh. For some man is a friend for his own occasion. Because some people is in it for their own. She probably set you up just so she don't have to be married to bro no more. But cause you to sin is crazy. You should have been in communication with a oh, oh, old oh boy that came before. Like, let me see. Let me, let me, you got to show me that you, like, you got to show, you have to diligently look into that thing and not be hasty to credit her. Cause then she's going to be in a position where she playing you like, oh, so you don't trust me. Then you know it's over with. Like, all right, bro, I already know how you're moving. Right. But that it's important that you don't be blinded by the situation and stick to proving a friend. Right. Come on. So like, uh, go ahead, my brother. Uh, just the last uh, point to touch on on that. Get us Cyrac 32 and 19 because, you know, this is something that we that we as a community, as we we as a people, we not big on this. Like we not. But the Bible teaches heavily about this. I'm talking about from beginning to end, like the scriptures truly teach about this. And, and you know, me, myself, you know, especially coming before the truth, like we just lack this a lot. And, you know, this is something that this this actually will help prevent them situations as well right go ahead and get that kind of one it's the book of sirach or ecclesiasticus chapter 32 verse 19. Mm -hmm. do nothing without advice and when thou hast once done repent not right or do not you do nothing without counsel basically like you know say seek counsel you know sometimes we seek counsel a lot of times we probably seek it after the fact after the marriage but you know you can seek it before too you can seek it before. Hey, SOT, we do counseling on every Sunday, every Sunday at 11 o'clock in the morning. Right? That's our service to the, to our nation. So, you know, even if you're not sure, or you, you know what I'm saying, y'all on the fence, go for the sisters too. If you, you know what I'm saying, you just want counsel, you just want advice, you know, get that. Get that before making that big, that big step uh, with, with consummating the marriage. You know what I'm saying? That way you can kind of, you can already kind of know like how you should move, what you're getting yourself into and stuff like that. Like, don't be surprise at the very end like you know right. in the beginning i don't want to get a kawaz kawaz a good question i don't want mm -hmm. and we're gonna answer that how sot answers that Can't go ahead and answer that okay so if the woman wants to leave from an abusive relationship with no end to it inside from the man what is she to do all right so council one thing that here in sot we teach is this right we really got to judge the matter we got to hear both sides of the story yeah, the woman is literally, you know, coming to us with her both of her eyes blacked out, her lips busted. Then, of course, we're gonna tell her to leave that man. That man hates you. Now we're gonna say to leave her, and that's not her husband anymore, and go get with the next brother in the camp. Lot, we would never teach that. We would right. never teach that. We want to see what's going on with this brother. But if this brother does not want to listen, and this brother really hates his wife, we cannot force this to be with somebody that's gonna kill her, probably. So we'll tell her to leave the man. And not because we want her to leave her man as a husband. We want her to. We want her to be safe and live. Right. Christ said, "God is, is is the God of the living, not the dead." So we got to protect our sister, and we'll guide her. We'll be her spiritual fathers. But first, we got to hear both stories. If the sister's just saying that she's getting beaten up by this man, okay, let's see that. Okay, there has to be evidence, right? First and foremost, he's a straight demon. How you file the police report? Why are you gonna let somebody keep on beating you every single day of your life? What are we Muslims now? Like that damn stinky Muslim. They had that sister, that them heathen uh, Ishmaelite all bruised up, like the Ottoman brought out. Right. So earlier, like, uh, we got to hear both matters. We got to judge the matters. But but if, if it comes to that where the sister's getting beaten and she's bruised up and all that, 
Uh, we're gonna. We want our sister to be safe. We'll take care of her. But if the manager just maybe just pushed her here and there, like, hey, he 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 needs counsel too, and he he needs to get himself correct. Because if, especially if he's a believing Israelite, can I hear with that one? Unless you both got something. Kind of the one, because because yeah, we would we would never uh, like I said in Ecclesiastes, like we you know being over righteous, we're not going we're not going to counsel. First off, we, we ain't going to counsel uh, a marriage without you know both parties present anyway. That's the SOT rule, but we would never tell a sister to stay in the same house as an abusive husband with a smile on her face to prove that she's following this law of not leaving her husband. Like, we still gonna tell you to get, you know what I'm saying, somewhere safe. So just going off like what the captain says, um, you know, we're gonna we're gonna judge the matter, you know, correctly to the to the law, and we're still gonna have practicality and you know with our people at the same time. That's right. Uh, let's see what's another one. Brother asked, uh, can you marry a woman that has been with many men in fornication but never lived with any man as a wife? She has demons on her. If you're going to take her in, you got to make sure the demons are off her. Like, she has demons. Like, a lot, of, a lot of people have demons in them, right? That's the whole point of this truth. Once you come to this truth, you're a new person. As you, how she said, John 3.16. That's the whole point of John 3.16. But Christians only want to talk about how it saves the white man. No, like, ah, you got to become a whole new person in order for your house to be your salvation. So if she still had all the demons on her, don't even mess with her. Don't even touch her. Because like this, even, even science will tell you, women that sleep with so much men, they could even, they, scientists can trace the semen from all these men 10 years back. Those are, those are, those are all different kind of spirits inside of her. She really has to get that spirit off her. Like it's it's it's, it's, it's disgusting for some first and foremost. It's disgusting to be having different kind of men. Like I said earlier, juices inside of them. It's just it's disgusting, and you don't want that around your king. Um, That's right. The demons is crazy. Sloppy tense is nasty. Yo yo yeah. <laughs> yo, these gorillas. I don't want these gorillas. Uh, is there any more questions y'all see? I was looking. Not really. It's more of like them kind of just confirming or acknowledging what we the questions that we answered. I'm not uh, really seeing any new ones. Oh, President, man. If y'all have any more questions, we're going to go ahead and, and get up off here, man. Yeah. Oh, praise to the most high. Yeah, though. I, I had some good questions in there. But y'all remember... Um, uh, those that are, those that are are planning to be in relationships and those that are in relationships understand. Get Galatians chapter six and verse one. It's a labor. It's a labor of love being in a relationship, and it's something that you have to put a lot of energy into, right? Whether you and then you men that are looking to get a second rib, it's a lot, it's energy you got to put into that. It's more energy because now you have two women, right? Let's get the book of Galatians chapter six. Selecting Galatians chapter six and verse one. Bring it up. Kyle, you got Kyle, if you don't got I got it. Now he probably do got it. I'll mute up. Kyle, you got it. Uh I should allow. Con out of one. It's the book of Galatians, chapter six, verse one. Mm -hmm. Brethren, if a man be overtaken in a fault, ye which are spiritual, restore such an one in the spirit of meekness. Considering thyself, lest thou also be tempted. Bear ye one of his burdens, mm -hmm. and so fulfill the law of Christ. So, boom. See, I have to understand. When y'all overtaking it false, there's going to be false between y'all in, in, a, in, a, uh, in a relationship. Y'all going to feel like somebody's doing somebody's wrong, and someone's not being more patient. Somebody's not being patient here. Somebody's not caring about feelings of being attentive here. But you have to understand. You have to understand one another, mm -hmm. right? And that when you overtake it in the vault, in the fault, what you have to do is what? Restore the person, your significant other, in the spirit of meekness. Now, sister, the spirit of meekness don't look like your attitude. Or your passive aggressive nature. It just don't look like that. Brother, 
the spirit of meekness ain't no sharp rebuke because you just got to be um, cry aloud and spare not, man. Right. Y'all have to understand that y'all y'all have to be patient with one another, okay? And restore each other in the spirit of meekness. So now a, a situation come up, y'all communicate like human beings. Y'all communicate like adults and mature people. And don't let your feelings get you uh, moving in the spirit of pride. Because uh, with pride comes what? Sin. Okay, that's true. Right. That's not what I'm looking for though. Are you um let's see. You see a brother Richard Did you Bryce, Bryce one? That's not it. With pride comes Proverbs thirteen to ten. Okay. Fall, that's true. Yeah, I was gonna say that. Okay, destruction, that's true. That's not what I'm looking for. What would make sense in a relationship though? Because, yeah, your pride could destroy your relationship for sure. Sloppy. For sure. Go ahead. Contention. Exactly. With pride comes contention. Right? And that pride, and that pride, that pride can make y'all, uh, make it very contentious. Right? Because you feel like you the right party. You feel like you the right party. And y'all not able to come to an understanding. The answer is contention, brothers and sisters. That's what I was looking for. Although destruction and a fall is true, but what I'm talking about in this context is contention. So what you have to do is put your pride aside and be meek. Think of yourself, think of yourself as nothing and your purpose as nothing. And now understand and walk through it with your significant other. It's it, it it's a la it's a labor though. It's work. Right? Welcome to having a relationship. <laughs> it's work. And then you got you two ribs. Now you gotta do that uh times two. You That's trying to fun. get a third rib. Now you're trying to do it. Now you're doing it times three. You can't now be irate and losing patience. Your patience got to grow. Because you can't have patience with one rib. And because of that situation, your patience is a little thinner with the second one. No, no, no. It don't work like that. Don't. Right? You can't. Sister, you can't have patience to your boss. And then once you get home, your man is just, oh, he get nothing. <laughs> no patience. And you just off the handle with him. It don't work like that, right? right. You know, relationship yeah. advice um, by Captain DeRock. Yeah, I don't want right. to. Let's get uh, earlier, uh, brother, uh, actually, soldier uh, Richard Perez has a question. I don't want to buy First Corinthians 7 and 15. Let's get that for the brother. I don't want to. Okay, this will be the last one, y'all. Where, where is that? First Corinthians 7 and 15 has a question on that one. What he say, brother? Let me, I'll, I'll read it out of one. Right. But if the unbelieving depart, let him depart. A brother or, or a sister is not under bondage in such cases, but God has called us to peace. Mm -hmm. What's the topic of the what was the topic of the scripture? The unbelieving. What does the unbelieving mean? They don't even believe this truth. They don't even believe what we're teaching that sex is marriage. You can't leave your wife, especially for stupid reasons. If they don't believe, they don't believe. You can't force nobody. If they leave, let them leave. What are you gonna do? Put a like we say, we're gonna do put a tool to the head and say, like, hey, you can't you can't leave me because there's nothing you can do. If they don't want to be with you, they're, they're not gonna be with you. You're not the one that's breaking the law, you're not the one that's going against the most high. They are, but why? Because they don't believe. There's even sisters in this truth that say they're Israelites that leave their husband and brother as well, also. Why? Because they really never believed. This is just a fact to them. They do not take the word of the most like serious. They do not take serious what Paul taught us. They do not take serious what Christ taught us. They're unbelievers. Let them bounce. What can you do? You can't force nobody. What did can't. Christ teach us? Dust the dust, dust the dust off your feet and just keep on moving, man. Exactly. More, if it's in the most high will, he'll bless you with a new husband. He'll bless you with a new sister. The them unbelieving husband, a wife that doesn't want to take the truth serious, hey, they're new to you. How are you? Calm. Right, all praises. Right, and with that, man, we love y'all family. Let me see what they're saying. We love y'all family, brothers and sisters. Hey, if you're a sister, you would love to join the Pillars of Rest program. Go to Patreon. Go to our Patreon, and there's a Pillar of Rest tier on there. Right, and if you would like to take it a step further and not only just watch the videos, but join the Pillars of Rest, right, you have to send us an email. But... Make it to our 
Make it to our Pillars of Rest brunch that's on April 21st, right? $15 admission if you're not part of the Pillars of Rest, right? But come brunch with us anyway, right? $15 ain't nothing, right? Free of all free of all type of foolishness and drama, go ahead, tap in. All praises to the most. High. Roy the Chef got this album, man, released, man. Y'all tap in with that album for sure. It's fire. You already know how he come, right? So Spotify, Apple Music, and YouTube, go ahead and tap in to Roe the Chef's album, right? We are the Sons of Thunder Israelites. It's our prayer, heart, desire for Israel to be saved. Khan? Khan. Khan. Hey, y'all step out of uh, Islam. Muhammad is teaching y'all to commit adultery. Get out of that. Dusty, dusty Ishmaelites. Shalom. Oh. Yeah. Oh. I just need a little faith in the most high. He order all the steps I take. Time to get weary, but I gotta keep the pace. The clock is ticking. Day of the Lord ain't gonna wait. I but yeah, I will walk the water for you. Grace. How about you? How I walk the water for you? Daily reflection got me vexed about my ways. Then I reproach myself this flesh. I can't escape. Put myself in check. Nike tracksuit in this case. Ain't too much sword. You know that word katana blades. Uh, blades cut me asunder so my carnal mind don't. Blunder, think the most high for SOT. I'm out that slumber. I pray I'm of the multitude that you can't number. Uh, number times he had blessed me like in forest counting trees. Yeah, how a light is judgment bring it to your knees. And it's a thin line between just enough and greed. Yeah, greed. I'm hungry for some righteous knowledge. I'm in. Tree and struggle hard to make it better for our seed. Loving your people is just more than a good deed. Seasons we got crabby with each other, disobeyed. So he put a nation over us, men that were base. They pervert the truth, they full of hate, they reprobates. Truth, he made us all, but us and you can't conflate. Both found in the ditch when the food tries to lead the blind. To be upright, man, perfect the laws and be divine. Take me through that fire, a new mind to be refined. Even if it light, the light hit gold, we still gon' shine. We still gon' yeah. You got that title that don't make you a good leader. You think your followers be gassing you? That's either he's pimping past the McIntyre congregations, Reba. Yeah, I see it. The wicked prosper, don't get caught up with the allure. A constant thought is one our nation gon' get restored. Search for the answers, keep the laws at the end, endure. Yeah, endure all the advices in the book that the fool won't visit. In wisdom, show herself the few and the most won't get it. Oh, wise man said, is this for sure or are you committed? Yeah, I'm in this. I'm putting bricks up for myself. You make your decision. The map is laid. I took the step. You trust your improvisions. I must the seed of faith. Now watch it grow up through the ceiling. And the most high, he order all the steps I take. Time to get weary, but I gotta keep the pace. The clock is ticking. Day of the Lord ain't gonna wait. I will, yeah, I will walk the water for you. Grace. I will walk the water for you. Grace. Thank you for watching. You can support the body via Cash App or PayPal. You can also support the channel by joining our Patreon for exclusive videos and content that can't be found anywhere else. We're the Sons of Thunder. It's our heart's prayer and desire for Israel that they might be saved. Shalom.